it's Jacqueline here with another installment of my cooking class. Super excited today because um, the weather is getting a little colder. I'm looking for a comfort meal and I thought I would use a product that is currently available um, for purchase on our holiday gift guide. It's not something that's normally in our line, but you're definitely going to want to grab this. This is the spinach and artichoke hot dip. So what I'm going to do today is I am actually going to make the hot dip like a stuffing of course we're gonna stuff chicken so using our cutting shears i'm just going to cut the top this is what the package looks like and oh my gosh it has a ton of flavor in it so the ingredients are spinach yes there's actually spinach in there garlic, onion, inactive nutritional yeast, black pepper, and chipotle chili. So it's got a little bit of heat, a little bit of pepper, and but lots of flavor. So we're just gonna dump that in. I've got some cream cheese that I've already cut up. Um, I got a little soft. I'm using my three-in-one spatula, as you can see. And we're gonna add a few other ingredients in here. So using our prep pro bowl, I actually have some mayonnaise, so you can add that. If you can't do mayonnaise, you could use sour cream if you prefer. We want to make a nice, creamy, decadent inside to our spinach dip. Now there is a, a recipe on the back of the package. I'm sort of modifying that, you know me, I never follow rules. But the nice thing about cooking with Epicurea is you really can't go that wrong. So we'll just get this mixed up a bit. We're also going to put in here, of course, our artichokes because you clearly heard that on the instructions that I gave you or the ingredient list, even though the spinach might be in here, the artichokes are not. So that's gonna be my fun food fact for the day. Okay, so here's the fun food fact. Artichokes are actually a globe thistle. And surprisingly enough, there is references of this thistle that goes back to the 8th century BC. That's a long, long, long time ago. In fact, it's believed that artichokes are one of the oldest food sources around. So that's sort of fun. Now, of course, it started in the Mediterranean. And so the Mediterranean, the Canary Islands were really, really popular for this lovely artichoke. And right now you can actually purchase it in the store. Sometimes it's in oil and sometimes it's in water and sometimes it's fresh. So there is a couple growing seasons that you need to be particular of or cognizant of because that's the best time to get into your artichokes. So there is a time in the spring, so March to May. And then there's also a time in the fall, which is September and October, that these artichokes are available. Now, if you buy artichokes in oil, I just wanna let you know, it's probably cheap oil. I wouldn't, I wouldn't actually use this if it had oil on it. Rinse it off and whatever. If you can find fresh artichokes, make sure that they're really tightly um, held together. If they start opening up, that means that they're getting old. So if you have any questions about that, just post below, I'll give you some of my tips. So we're basically going to grab our artichoke parts here. We're gonna use our ceramic knife and we're just going to coarsely chop these up so that we can add it right to, of course, our stuffing. Now, I, I would like bite-sized pieces because we also wanna make sure that we get this fairly finely chopped so that our uh, chicken doesn't fall apart. Now you may find that when you're cutting, if you if it's really, really um, dense and your knife doesn't want to cut through it, just pull off those extra leaves. They're already, you know, hard. It's not something that you're going to want to be tasting in your meal. It's sort of like uh, asparagus. You know how you buy asparagus and you snap it off? Well, that's the same with artichokes when you buy them. Sometimes you do find that they leave a couple of the outside Sleeves are just a little tough and you may just want to pull those off. Okay, so I've just roughly chopped this. Nicely chopped here. I still want to have some decent chunks in here. So I know I'm actually having artichokes. Okay, so I'm using my flexible cutting board as you can see. 
got this on here. And now we're simply going to add this to our mix. So here comes my three in one spatula. You know how I love this spatula so much. Okay, now the other thing that I'm going to also add, I know that there's spinach already in here, but I have some spinach in my fridge. And hey, having those nice, rich, dark greens in your diet can never be bad. So you may want to just grab some fresh spinach if you have it in the fridge and add this to it. So I've already washed this off. Again, grabbing my knife. I'm just gonna cut this into some smaller pieces. And again, I mean, I like the flavor of the fresh. If you don't have this spinach, not a big deal. There is spinach already in the package, but I just think it's gonna look super, super pretty. All right, so again, we'll just get a good mix. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna stuff chicken breasts. Um, if, you want, if you don't wanna do chicken breasts, you can do chicken thighs. They're a little bit more difficult because of course they're smaller. And what I did with my chicken breasts is I actually pounded them a bit um, with a, a meat tenderizer just because I wanted to get them even thickness and I want to be able to stretch my chicken around. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Okay, so here's a couple butterflied chicken breasts. And so what I'm going to do here, as you can see, I pounded them out so they're rather thin. If you do have them separating a little bit, not a big deal. But what we're going to do is we're going to roughly put maybe a, oh gosh, a couple tablespoons of this mix in here and we're going to just quickly just cover it up. Now, I know I have some toothpicks here. Doo, doo, doo. So we're, if you have some toothpicks handy and then what we're going to do is you're just gonna take your toothpick and you're going to thread it to sort of secure it together, okay? And we're going to get our, our oven, our stove going here right away, get our heat going and off we go. All right, now you'll notice there's a lot of dip mix left. So the nice thing about that is you can have it for an appy, but we're actually gonna make a sauce as well with that. So again, we're just going to grab our toothpick here, tuck that in, and I just sort of, sort of like sewing in and out, in and out, in and out giving it a nice, a nice keep together. All right, so now we've got oil in our fry pan. You can bake this in the oven, but I actually want to fry it on the stove because I wanna get it nice and brown. Um, you can do a combination of both. You can actually have, have this uh, cooked and caramelized a bit with the brown, um, and then you can actually bake it in the oven or you can do it all in one. I'm actually gonna do it all in one today. Let's get out a fry pan because I definitely will need that. So just got a little bit of oil in here as you see and we're going to season this. So some of the seasonings that you can maybe use is, I, of course you know I'm gonna have a little bit of roasted garlic on there, um, but in my trusty little drawer here, I'm sure we could put a little bit of SPG and the other one I'm looking for, as you can see, I have a spice drawer and they're all labeled. I am looking for, let's see if I can find it. Oh, this is brand new to the season. This is our bruschetta, right? Love this flavoring. So I'm just gonna put a little bit on my hand Coat that on there, a little bit more on this one. I can feel my hand getting warm over here, so this is almost ready. SPG, of course, you know, stands for salt, pepper, garlic, all packed in one. So that's sort of nice, give that a good sprinkle. Do it on the other side. 
And I, as you know, I always put roasted garlic aioli on here. So I'll just put a little on my hand here and we'll just sprinkle this on as well. Yum. Okay, so let's get it into our fry pan and get this caramelizing. So fun food fact about artichokes as well is um, how they actually came. They originally started over in the Mediterranean and um, the Europeans brought them over to the United States. So when they brought them over, they landed, of course, the uh, European settlers or explorers actually landed in Louisiana. So I'm not sure Louisiana is that popular of a place to be growing artichokes. But they did migrate all the way over to California. And surprisingly, um, it's good to know that California actually is the producer of over 90% of the artichokes that are grown and sold. Now, as I mentioned, artichokes, there is a season. So if you have to buy canned, go buy canned. Artichokes tend to be more expensive. So if you can find them on sale, grab them. And I like the ones... Um, that aren't in a whole bunch of oil. I like getting them in water. It's sort of like, um, oh gosh, tuna. You know how you can get tuna in oil and tuna in water? Same thing is with artichokes. So, all right, so we just got the pan going here. We're going to just get this nicely browned. And because I pounded them out so that they were quite thin, it's going to cook a lot, a lot faster. We'll just let this go for a quick second. I'll be right back. I'm just going to grab some milk because we're going to make our sauce in a second. All right, so let's just see what this is looking like. You can see it's browning already. All right, so now that it's starting to brown, what I'm going to want to do, if I'm going to cook it in the skillet, is we're going to want to make sure that we sort of heat it with steam or cook it through. At this point, if you would sooner bake it in the oven, you totally can. Just put it literally, you could, you could layer it inside your square steamer. I'll grab one out for you. So you can put it in your square steamer, and yes, this baby can go into an oven up to 450 degrees. What you're going to do again is you're just going to make sure you put the lid on here and you're just going to bake it. Like I said, I wanted to make a sauce today. This is why I'm actually doing it in the fry pan. So I can see this is getting nicely brown now. So I am now just going to put a lid on it. All right. So uh, what else can I tell you about the fun food fact? Okay, spinach is super, super good for you. Of course, you know that, that uh, all those extra greens are really good for iron, but I do wanna tell you how amazing these artichokes are. Now, artichokes actually have vitamin K. So if you are concerned about the calcium in your diet and you want great absorption, vitamin K is fabulous for you. So artichokes, artichokes, artichokes. The other thing that's really, really cool about artichokes is they actually lower your LDL cholesterol. So if you have someone in your family who has higher cholesterol, one of the things that you may want to do is just start eating a whole bunch of artichokes. Of course, it's got lots of minerals like copper and magnesium as well, but it's almost like a little superfood. Who knew? So. Anyway, I'm going to just uh, cut this for now, and I'm going to come back once this is cooked up, and we'll start making the sauce. You could be making this over this sauce for over top of cauliflower, rice cauliflower, or you could do real rice, or you could even do noodles, but this sauce is going to be absolutely amazing. Okay, woo! So we're back. As you can see, my chicken is nicely brown. Let's check it on both sides. Beautiful. We're just gonna pull that out. Um, if you're concerned about whether it's cooked or not, just take your knife and just do a quick little cut and make sure that there's no pink in there, okay? 
So I'm using our grip and grab. I'm just gonna carefully take that out. And I had mentioned that we're gonna use some of this for making a sauce. So we're gonna turn down our temperature here in our pan. And we're gonna add, and you can, if you want the richer version, by all means, go ahead. But I'm just going to use some milk. And we are going to thin out some of this sauce. And then we're gonna put our chicken back in. Now, I want my sauce to look absolutely amazing. And as you can see, there's still a lot left for your, your Friday night special if you're having some guests over or whether you're just gonna entertain yourself by watching the Friday family movie. I love this artichoke dip, so nice. Okay, set my chicken aside here. All right, so I want to add a little bit of extra spinach because it looks nice. And of course, spinach has got a lot of moisture in it. So it's gonna wilt right down. The other thing that I might want to do is um, just to amp it up a little bit more. I know we have cream cheese in there, but you might want to put some grated Parmesan and mozzarella. This is a combination of both. And we're just going to let this melt a little bit. We'll get our rice. Going. I'm just going to give this a quick little taste. Of course, whenever you're making food, make sure you always do a taste test. Mmm, yum. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Delicious. Okay. Super tasty. So you can see it's thickening up now. So all it is is a matter of now getting our chicken back inside here. Getting it nice and plated. After we've got this done, I would just be making up some veggies here. So carrots would be great in here. Like I said, rice or cauliflower rice would be absolutely fabulous. So that is our cooking class for today. So there is our fabulous spinach artichoke stuffed chicken breast. Hope you enjoyed the cooking class today. You can see how easy this was to make. And uh, serve it with whatever veggies you would like. Thanks for watching to today's cooking class. Make sure that you grab your spinach and artichoke mix while it's available. It's in the gifting guide, which is good from now till December, I think it's 14th, whichever comes sooner because it's while quantities last. So December 14th or before, I grab it sooner than later, just in case it sells out. It's pretty popular. Thanks everyone for watching my cooking class. Enjoy and we'll see you again next Thursday. Bye for now.